Since the beginning of time, people have been fascinated by the sparkling lights of the night sky, particularly the stars. But despite the fact that humans have been pondering these brilliant heavenly entities for a very long time, astronomers still have a lot of questions regarding how and why stars are formed. Want to know more? Then stay tuned to the future space. We are here to astound and amaze you. So let's begin. The absence of clear photographs of the parts of the universe where stars are formed is a significant contributor to the fact that the process of star formation has been cloaked in mystery for such a long time. According to a press release from NASA, the James Webb Space Telescope is adding new chapters to the stellar creation story with its high-tech cameras and other advanced sensors. The James Webb Space Telescope, or JWST, is currently the most important telescope in its field. The telescope was intended to be used as an infrared area observatory and its primary purpose was to look very far back into the history of the cosmos. Following the launch of the telescope in 2021, it has continued a highly illustrious tradition ever since. It is the next big space research observatory after Hubble. It was planned to address pressing puzzles about the universe and to make groundbreaking discoveries in all subfields of astronomy. Webb will allow us to observe everything from the development of the earliest galaxies in the early universe through the formation of stars and planets. Webb is a multinational collaboration involving NASA, the European Space Agency, and the Canadian Space Agency. The telescope was carried into space on the Ariane 5 rocket that lifted off from the European spaceport in French Guiana. Right on cue, let's dive into James Webb Telescope's insanity! The Tarantula Nebula, also known as the 30 Doritus, is a star-forming region that can be found in the Large Magellanic Cloud Galaxy, which is located 161,000 light-years away. The nebula is the largest and brightest star-forming region in the local group, which contains our galaxy the Milky Way. It stretches across 340 light-years and is the brightest star-forming zone. Doesn't that excite you what is Tarantula Nebula? The vast region of ionized interstellar atomic hydrogen that is known as the Tarantula Nebula is also referred to as the H2 region. During the years 1751 and 1753, a French astronomer named Nicolas Louis de Lacaille was on an expedition to the Cape of Good Hope in South Africa. While there, he made the initial discovery of the Tarantula Nebula. The Tarantula Nebula is the largest and brightest star-forming region in the local group. It is home to the stars in the galaxy that are the most massive and have the highest temperatures. Only one of the well-known star clusters found within the Tarantula Nebula has more than 800,000 stars and protostars that have been catalogued, stars in formation. Because of this, the entire structure was initially considered to be a single bright big star until it became possible to image it at a high resolution at which point additional definition showed its real nature. Images obtained from the Hubble Space Telescope This landscape is ever-evolving as a result of a variety of factors, including ultraviolet light, stellar winds, rapid combustion processes, and more. Even though the brightness magnitude of the Tarantula Nebula is just 8.0, this is exceptionally bright considering how far away it is from Earth. The overall mass of the Large Magellanic Cloud which contains the Tarantula Nebula, is estimated to be 10 billion sun masses. Therefore, the Tarantula Nebula, which has a mass of only 1 million solar masses, is one of the largest entities inside the LMC. R136 is a starburst zone that is located within NG2070. This starburst region is mostly accountable for the rest of the Tarantula Nebula and is visible in the night sky. R136 is quite young, having only existed for about 2 million years, but it has an incredibly dense density, measuring 450 million solar masses. It is home to some of the most luminous, hottest, and dense stars that have ever been recorded. The masses of some of its younger stars are 100 times that of the Sun. Hodge 301, the second prominent star cluster found within the Tarantula Nebula, is located in a direction that is approximately perpendicular to that of NG2070's R136. It is believed to be between 20 and 25 million years old, making it far older than other things. Estimates provided by astronomers that 40 of its stars have already attained the status of red giants and subsequently exploded as supernovae. Theoretically, some of these stars are still expelling material in all directions at the speed of approximately 200 million miles per second. Why is it so well known? 
Astronomers who are interested in the development of stars frequently focus their attention on the Tarantula Nebula. The chemical composition of the Tarantula Nebula is very similar to that of the gigantic star-forming regions that were observed during the cosmic noon that occurred one billion years after the Big Bang event that caused the formation of the universe. This is the primary reason for the interest in the Tarantula Nebula. Scientists now have a wonderful opportunity to observe the processes that contributed to the birth of the cosmos. One of the most recent accomplishments of the telescope is an in-depth mosaic image of the Tarantula Nebula. According to NASA, the Tarantula Nebula is one of the most exciting stellar nurseries in the area, since it is home to some of the most massive and hottest stars that are known to exist in the cosmos. The moniker Creepy Crawly was given to the nebula because previous telescopic photographs showed hazy filaments that resembled hairy spider legs. Despite the fact that the nebula seems to be much less spider-like in the updated and more detailed web image, astronomers are extremely pleased with the photo. This is due to the fact that Webb was able to capture hundreds of young stars that had never been observed before. These stars were always hidden by cosmic dust when examined via other telescopes. The image captured by Webb provides a detailed look at the dispersion of the nebula's dust and gas, in addition to showing galaxies in the background that are very far away. In contrast, the regions of the Milky Way that are contributing to the formation of new stars do not share the same chemical makeup as the nebulae that are present during the cosmic midday and do not generate new stars at the same time as the Tarantula Nebula. According to NASA, Webb will offer astronomers the opportunity to compare and contrast images of star formation in the Tarantula Nebula with the telescope's deep studies of distant galaxies from the real era of cosmic noon. The Tarantula Nebula was the target of the astronomers' attention as they directed all three of the high-resolution infrared cameras that were attached to the telescope in its direction. According to NASA, the near-infrared camera captured an image of the hollow central cavity of the Tarantula. This cavity was generated by the blistering radiation and stellar winds that emanated from huge, young, pale blue stars. In the image of the Tarantula, its blazing gas and dust clouds can be seen. These clouds are lit by the blue and purple hues of rich hydrocarbons. The Webb Telescope is already assisting astronomers in developing a deeper understanding of the universe. Webb Space Telescope is picking up where its predecessor, the 32-year-old Hubble Space Telescope, leaves off. As it sends back stunning photos of galaxies, fresh views of Jupiter, and troves of other crucial data, Webb is filling in the gaps left by Hubble. According to Eric Smith, the principal scientist for the James Webb Space Telescope, who was interviewed by Shi N. Kim of Smithsonian Magazine a year ago, a new high-tech telescope was constructed through a collective effort and embodies the complete force of human ingenuity. Do you believe it's possible that another telescope might have accomplished this? Please share your thoughts in the space provided below. Well, I guess we're done here for the day. Sincerely, we hope the video was entertaining. We can't do this without you, so please subscribe to our channel and check out more of our fantastic videos.